Yo, 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 guys, welcome back again today. Today, we're going to be talking about Fatu Samba. So if you don't know what K-pop is, K-pop is Korean pop. It's become a lot more popular uh, as the recent years have went by. It's super duper popular in Eastern countries, right? And especially in Asia, but it's starting to move into Europe and America. I personally don't think that it will ever be as dominant as hip hop is, but it's definitely rising up. And a lot of people know what K-pop is, even if they don't listen to it. So let's talk about Fatou Samba. So she originally was from Senegal, if I'm correct, in West Africa. And she moved when she was 12 years old to the European country of Belgium. And between her being in Africa, when she was in Africa, she states that she listened to a lot of like Afro beats, hip hop, uh, different African musics, right? And then when she went to Europe, to Belgium, that's when some of her friends, uh, if I'm correct, at school probably, introduced her to like K-pop and R&B and like Euro hip hop. And so after that, she wanted to start modeling. So she began modeling and then she got her visa to Korea where she modeled at too as well. And then once she got to Korea and she modeled there, she eventually followed her dreams into being a singer or a rapper. So I just found this out recently. And it's funny because I have a couple of little kids in my family that they like K-pop. I'm personally, I have never really heard too much K-pop that I actually like. I feel like a lot of K-pop, of course, because it's pop music, is very like gimmicky and like mainstream. Of course, there's probably groups that I have no idea about that exist that might be dope. But to be honest with you, I'm more into Japanese culture. So when it comes to Asian cultures, like I love the Thai culture, I love Cambodian culture. As you guys know, I even speak some Cambodian, you know, to all my Khmer people, Jidipsu, you know, I just saw a Saat Srey, you know? So I speak Cambodian, I speak Khmer, I speak some other Asian languages, but Japanese to me is like the pinnacle of Asian culture to me. But obviously k-pop is like super duper huge right now but for me when i hear k-pop i just sort of like it but there really hasn't been anything that stood out to me where i'm like i love this so much to where when i hear japanese uh pop right or when japanese people basically take other genres of music that are not traditionally japanese music like especially when it comes to hip-hop african-american music like hip-hop or r&b or rock or soul or funk or whatever it is they do it in a way that's so dope now i don't know if it's because i maybe prefer the japanese language over the korean language i like the korean language but i think that the japanese language is just so beautiful i don't know why but i just i love the the what i think personally is like sort of kind of the forcefulness of japanese language and i don't know if i like japanese music or pop music better maybe because uh, the korean language is not my favorite language to actually like speak and listen to even though i think it's nice language i think that japanese is better but it's so interesting because now i'm actually going to go and listen to some of her songs i heard her rap a little bit and she's pretty dope like she's rapping in korean and it's crazy because she learned korean in one year so what am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Because she learned it in one year and she actually knows other languages as well. I think she knows French, she knows English, and I think she knows Belgian as well. So she's very, very talented and she's a K-pop superstar now. She actually had a couple of trials and tribulations. She was at one point going to leave the group because obviously if you're a black woman, right, coming into Korea, you're doing K-pop even though pop music is not even an original Korean thing, it's not a traditional Korean thing, that's actually a thing that comes from America, but you're coming in and you're doing pop and in Korea, there's a certain beauty standards and there's a traditional culture. It's going to be hard to break into the beauty standards, what they like, because I know Korean people. I know what it is. I know what it is in Korea too. Like y'all, you Korean people, like especially the Korean people I know, you like really super duper light, 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 light skin, light skin, barely no melon in your skin yo you ever watch uh korean drama you ever watch korean tv this is what the culture is it is what it is you know what i'm saying this is what they have in korea so you have somebody that's coming with a darker melon into a place to where a lot of people uh are super duper light skin and this is maybe what they prefer in their culture and this is the beauty standard it's not going to be easy so at one point she almost wanted to actually quit because there were some Korean fans that were talking down to her and saying things to her that were rude or mean. 
I don't really know exactly what they was, but I can only like guess in my head and imagine. I'm pretty sure I, it's easy to imagine. Maybe you're a black girl, you're not supposed to be here. Maybe your skin is too dark for Korean culture. Why are you in K-pop? Even though we know that she's probably gonna dominate K-pop, at least with skills, maybe not popularity, because they might not they might look at her and be like, ah, oh, you're not Korean, right? And there's tradition there. So I get that. But in skills, she probably going to be the best, probably, especially the more that she learns Korean. She's probably going to be the best because if you're in a group and you're rapping and you're doing hip hop, which is automatically black culture, specifically African-American culture, then it's like, yo, of course, you're going to be good at it. You're going to be right at home because you're a black person and the, you're going to have that style, that flavor, that feel that a lot of people that are rapping in Africa or in the Caribbean or in America or in Europe or whatever in Asia, they're going to have that, right? Because naturally, it's going to be part of the overall black culture for the most part, right? Just like reggae or just like Afro beats, right? Majority of black people around the world have at least heard of it, even if they don't listen to one of them or they know somebody that probably listens to these things, even if they don't listen to it. So it's embedded in the culture, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So it's interesting because she almost quit, but the women in her group actually told her and a, a couple of those women in the group i don't know how many but i think maybe two or three are korean women and they basically told her don't listen to these people and stay in the group and that they care for her and like her and she doesn't have to conform to korean society now it's also interesting as well because in this group there is well in k-pop there has been a brazilian woman which i really don't know who she is i ha I have to like look into it i don't know if she's an afro brazilian woman i don't think she is she might be maybe a mixed brazilian woman or you know maybe like a euro brazilian woman because there are different type of brazilians right like i think a lot of people forget that it's not the brazil is a nationality there's still ethnicities within brazil and so that's why i said that but also within their group within fatu's group right? There's an Indian girl. So there's a first ever K-pop Indian girl artist, right? Shout out to all my Indian people. You know, I got mad Indian friends. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Then they have a Brazilian K-pop singer. Then they also have the first black K-pop singer. And within that group, for sure, I don't know exactly where the Brazilian girl is that group. Cause like I said, I'm not really into K-pop that much, but the Indian girl and the black girl are in the same group. And the group is called black Swan. And so black Swan is this new group that I'm actually going to look for. I know BTS. Of course, I know BTS. I knew BTS even before everybody knew it was really big because I'm, I'm deep into the Asian world. So, you know, through the Japanese grapevine and then all these other like Cambodian, Laos culture through my homeboys, some of my homegirls, I heard of them years ago when they was coming up. Um, what is my take on BTS? I'm not the biggest fan of them. You know, I respect some K-pop groups because they give homage to a lot of black artists because a lot of stuff that they do when it comes to hip hop and break dancing, those are all black cultural things. Those are not traditional Asian things. So since they're not traditional Asian things, I think it is right a lot of times when you're doing somebody else's music to pay homage to them. I would pay homage to somebody if I was doing their traditional music or their legends, I would pay homage to let them know that, look, I understand the history of it because understanding the history of something is very important. I don't want to just go through and just take somebody else's stuff and be like, I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? And don't ever want to understand. I can only imagine how that would feel. So you should imagine how it feels if you come and do somebody else's culture and music and you don't pay homage to them as if you don't know that's where it's from because you know in your heart traditionally that is not your traditional music that is somebody else's traditional music right so today we learned about Fatu right she's in Black Swan this actually made me want to listen to it more I'm gonna try to listen to more of the group this is maybe the first or one of the first multicultural k-pop uh, groups in Korea right and maybe in the future there'll be way more you know look i'm all about this if you have mutual respect for somebody and their culture and who they are then i'm good with you you just need to have respect that's really all it is at the end of the day and it don't take that much to have respect for somebody you know what i'm saying if if nobody's giving you a reason not to respect them then i respect you it is what it is right so guys go check her out if you want to see her go check her out go check out her music of course it's on youtube everywhere else you can check it out if you like this video add me on all social medias which is instagram twitter soundcloud snapchat facebook and tiktok or african network like and subscribe turn on the bell notification down there so you get all my videos and yo guys until next time peace one love